What's up, guys? It's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. This past week, my business partner flew down to Cosmail. He took a group of divers with him. And while down there, there was about a 100-foot wreck that they were on. And one of the other divers on the boat made a comment about, hey, we're at 100 feet. Why is nobody using nitrox? And why is everybody using air? And we've learned in some of our other videos that the higher percentage of nitrox may not necessarily be good for deep diving because of the partial pressures. But let's do a little experiment here and see if you are diving a nitrox cylinder and an air cylinder on two different dives, or let's say you had nitrox for one dive and air for another dive, would it be better to use the nitrox on your deepest dive and then use air on shallow or use air on your deepest dive and use the nitrox bottle for your shallower dive? Now, when I was planning these out, I had a little trouble determining what nitrox blend to use, but I made it very simple. And, and the way I did it, I thought about, hey, no matter where you go in the world, what is the two blends of nitrox you will find regardless? And it's 32% and 36%. Yes, if they partial pressure blend, you can get any blend you want. However, most places in the tropics don't partial pressure blend. They have it banked, and you're either only going to get NOAA 1, which is 32%, or NOAA 2, which is 36%. And we're going to use 36% because it is a richer blend. It does have a higher percentage of O2. And for the two Two depths that I chose, of course, 70 feet and 40 feet, which is a wreck dive and typically a reef dive, something like that. That 36% is going to work regardless uh, of which one we use it on. But let's look real quick, and what we're going to base this off of is, should I use air first, then nitrox, or nitrox first, then air? And we're going to do all our profiles on our minimum surface interval, because, by the way, that is one of the neat things about nitrox. It shortens our surface interval down so that we can get back in the water a little bit quicker than normal. So the, on the first one, I'm going to use the 36% percent blend first for my deep dive. I'm going to see what my minimum surface interval is, and then I'm going to use air for my 40-foot reef dive. Now, once again, I'm going to be using SSI dive tables, but you can do the same thing with the paddy tables or the uh, navy tables, but we're going to just going to be using SSI simply because it's a little bit easier because everything is laid out. If you're not familiar with the SSI tables, they have the air the NOAA 2 Nitrox 32, or NOAA 1 Nitrox 32, and NOAA 2 Enriched Air Nitrox 36, all on the same chart, so it's very easy. With patties, it's really no different. You just have three tables that you gotta look at, or three different sets of dive tables. This is kinda everything put together in one, so it's a little bit easier, so that's why we're gonna use SSIs. So on this first dive, once again, I'm going to be using 36% nitrox. I'm going to 70 feet for 40 minutes, and it's real simple to do on the tables. You simply go to the Enriched Air 36 column. We're going to go down to 70 feet, which, of course, would round up, and I'm going to scroll over, and my bottom time was 40 minutes, so I'm going to scroll over till I see 40, and that gives me a pressure group of G. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here, and I'm going to try to do this in color code so it's a little easier to keep up with. Now, to find the minimum surface interval, I'll try to do a video on that in the future. If you're not familiar with that, you should have learned it in your open water course. If not, I'll make you a video on it. But I need to find out what my minimum surface interval to do this next dive is. And I'm going to be switching over to air because, once again, we want to know if I should use nitrox on the deep dive and then air on the shallow or air on the deep dive and nitrox on the shallow. So for this next dive and to get my minimum surface interval, i got to kind of reverse the order of the way I work the tables. So I'm going to go ahead and go to table three. I'm going to completely uh, skip the um, surface interval chart. I'm going to go straight over to my residual nitrogen chart, which is table three, and I'm going to find 40 feet, and I'm going to scroll over until I see 60 minutes as my new adjusted time or new Doppler time. So simply, I go to table three. I go down on air until I find 40 feet. And then I'm going to scroll over until I see 60 minutes in the bottom number or the next high. So 57 would be 69 is what it rounds up to. And that gives me a pressure group of F. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up there. And then simply to find a minimum surface interval, I go back to my table 2 or surface interval chart. And I, I need to find out how much time it takes to go from a G to an F. And that's our minimum surface interval. So simply I go to G. And I'm going to scroll down. And then I'm going to scroll over to intersects with F, and it shows me the minimum surface interval here is 41 minutes. 
So to do these two dives safely in that particular order, using nitrox 36 first and then air. So I'm gonna go to 70 feet for 40 minutes on nitrox 36. Then I'm gonna go to 40 feet for 60 minutes on plain air. The minimum amount of time I have to stay out of the water is 41 minutes. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same two dives, but we're gonna reverse the gas blend or the gas mixture that we're breathing. We're gonna do the air first and then switch over and do nitrox and see if that shortens our surface interval because that's one of the benefits of nitrox is it shortens your surface intervals to get you back in the water a little bit quicker. So let me redo the board here and I want you to remember 41. So I'm gonna do up here on the top, I'm gonna write 36% and we'll do 41 minutes if we did this one first, and then I'll write if we did the air first and see what it comes out to. So give me just a second here to clear the chart. So this changes to air. This will change to nitrox, 36%. And we'll change this to air, 70 for 40. And we'll change this 40 to 60, but we'll do it on nitrox. And we'll get rid of the center part and redo our calculations again. Okay, so once again, we're doing the exact same two dives, but we're gonna start the dive on air, and then we're gonna do our next dive on 36% and see what our minimum surface interval ends up being after that particular dive. So once again, on this, it's very simple. This time we're gonna be using the air column instead of the nitrox 36. We're gonna to go to 70 feet and we're gonna stay for 40 minutes. And that puts me in pressure group H. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna go do our shallow dive to 40 feet for 60 minutes, but this time we're gonna switch over to the nitrox 36. So nitrox 36, I'm gonna go to 40 feet and I'm gonna stay for 60 minutes. So I have to find 60 in the bottom number. Of course, it would round up to the 73 here. And that gives me the pressure group of H as well. And then all I've got to do to find the minimum surface interval is intersect H with H, which is very simple to do. I come over here and I find H and H is course here on the bottom so H to H my minimum surface interval would be 10 minutes so in comparison to the first two dives we did using nitrox first and then air we see it only takes a 10 minute minimum surface interval to do those two dives safely simply by switching the order of the gas we breathe so if we come up here and we do air first Our minimum surface interval is simply 10 minutes. So anytime that you have two different gas mixtures, in general, it's gonna be better to breathe the higher percentage on your second dive than what it is on your first dive. Now, once again, we're always gonna do our deepest dive first, then shallow, but if you use that nitrox on your shallower dive, it will shorten your no decompression limit, or your, I'm sorry, your surface interval, and it will also extend the no decompression limit as well. Once again, we compare nitrox to air. It's always better to do the air dive first on your deepest dive than switch over to a nitrox blend or a higher O2 blend for your second dive. Now, if you're renting nitrox, you're probably gonna be diving nitrox on both dives both first tank and second tank or if you're breathing air you're probably going to be doing both but you never know you may come across that situation where you want to dive nitrox and maybe they've only got one tank to fill or maybe you do want to maximize how much time you get underwater by shortening your surface interval and this is a very good easy way to do it on this first one we simply maxed out our no decompression limit so you got the maximum amount of time that you could under the water and of course here we based it off of just your basic bottom time of what the boat captain's going to tell you so that's where we come up with our depth and time or time limitations there 
but we can clearly see that if you did the 36% first on these two profiles, it would take 41 minutes before you could get back in the water to dive air again. But if we did air first, it only takes 10 minutes to get back in the water to be up if you're diving 36%. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you got any questions on these calculations or any questions on the tables, whether it's PADI tables or Navy tables or uh, the SSI tables or even PDIC or SEI tables, simply put it down in the comment section below. I'll try to help you out the best I can. Uh, if you got any other questions or comments or concerns or anything you want to see a video on, simply put it down in the comment section below. We've got a ton of requests that we're going to try to get out before uh, we get too full-fledged into our spring season and then our summer season, and we'll try to get these videos out for you. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, hit that subscribe button here on YouTube, pin us on Pinterest, and I just completely messed up my outro. So guys, let me try that again. Make sure you like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Pin us on Pinterest. Hit that little subscribe button down there. And guys, as always, we appreciate your business.